good morning students today we are going to learn about the, how to distinguish between a flower and an inflorescence right and after that we are going to identify the main characteristics of a flower which belongs to solanaceae family okay so here are our objectives identification of the inflorescence types and next how to study the given flowering plant specimen okay so let's start so here you can see some flowers isn't it anybody is going to say ma'am there are so many flowers but as a biologist what do you think there is a difference between this one and there is a difference with this cluster of flowers what is inflorescence actually inflorescence this is the inflorescence and this is a solitary flower so how am i able to distinguish it we have picked out this flower from a plant correct and here you can see there are leaves here from where the special branch like filaments have come out and they are ended up some of them are in full bloom whereas others are in bud condition bud condition so a flower is coming up from now looking at this tiny weed this is also an inflorescence it appears like a flower but it is also an inflorescence or rather a cluster of flowers which is which is compressed on the axis on this shoot which is compressed on this shoot cut on our attention to the board there are two main types of inflorescence i have drawn two of them where we can see that the tip of the shoot ends in a bud floral bud whereas the flowering has already started from the base from the base if we move towards the apex we see the old flowers are at the base and the young ones are at the tip here the growth of this growth of this shoot is unlimited it is unlimited and thus we call this manner of growth is what acropital the blooming of the flowers is from base to the apex and it is known as racemose type of inflorescence the other category is known as cymose so what is the difference here here the tip of the shoot ends up in a flower the tip of the shoot ends up in a flower so the growth of this shoot becomes limited and the newer flowers are towards the base so if we see the mode of blossoming so it is from the tip towards the base and hence we call it basi petal so the main difference that you see is that here the growth is from base to apex and here from apex to base so these are the two main types of inflorescences that you should be knowing thank you now we are going to discuss about the main characteristics of a flower which has been given to us it is a flower from solanaceae so how could we say that it belongs to the family solanaceae correct we have yet another specimen in front of us which belongs to the same family it's the it's a brinjal flower i hope you have recognized it now this is datura flower and this is solanum aigra the problem is that i don't have the twig of this flower to show you how the leaves look like you can form an idea of the twig from where i have brought this datura here the leaves are entire the leaves don't have any serrations right and there are bracts also which are present you can feel something is woolly it is entire oh wait the leaves are now this flower is bell shaped both of them belong to the same family here it's in full bloom so you can feel that it's regular in shape regular means they are mirror images along any radii passing through that now this flower hangs down and it's bell shaped bell shaped from top you can see this is the stalk or pedicellate flower next to it this long green uh, bell type you know uh, structure which is enclosing it is known as calyx the outer wall calyx calyx is made of sepals correct one 
2, 3, 4 and 5. It becomes prominent when we make an incision and we place it on the board. The way we incise it and then we arrange it nicely on the board. So, you can now count how many sepals are there in the calyx. Right. So, let me pin it up. They are all fused together that is what they are gamosepalous condition. And what are we left with? This is the corolla tube. So, now the shape becomes prominent to you is not it? This bell shaped flowers they hang like this from the plant. Now, let us open it up. One has been opened, kept open and now we are showing the ls of a flower, a vertical section to the flower. It reveals you two things, see I am holding it straight. Look at the nature of the anthers and this is the andricium part where the andricium is fixed with the calyx. It is fixed with the calyx near the base. This condition is known as epipetalus. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, how many anthers are there? 5 of them are there. And what is their condition? They are all fixed near the basis. And one which protrudes out, this is the part of gynecium. It is showing the stigma and a long style. Long style, it ends up into a swollen ovary. At the base, there is an ovary. So, this is the innermost part of the flower. This is the innermost part of the flower where you can see a pistil. Let us spin it up on the board, right. Is it placed? Ovary is hypogynous. That means, the position of the ovary is above all the other worlds. So, it is the several parts of this flower. Over to the board now. This is the floral twig which we were dealing with. When we made an LS of the flower, it revealed us the calyx which are having 5 sepals. Then we are having the petals. There are 5 of them and they are also fused. Their tips are acuminate. Here we find there are 5 anthers. 5 anthers who are epiphyllous in nature and there is a stigma with a long style and a swollen ovary. If we are able to create a TS, a transfer section of the ovary, this is revealed. This is revealed which we can see under the simple dissecting microscope. We find the placenta is in the center and the ovules are arranged around them giving it an axile placentation. Right. And this is the gynecium and this is the nature of the stamens. We are going to learn two things now. One is the floral diagram, another one is the floral formula. Whatever knowledge we acquired by studying this flower, we are representing it through a diagram. The presence of this shows that it is a bracteate flower. The small circle which is there on top, it shows the mother axis of the flower. With respect to mother axis, how are the different units of the flower arranged? We have drawn. This is the calyx 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 5 calyx and they are having vulvate estivation. They are having vulvate estivation. Next, this yellow marked area shows you the sepals. This is the corolla part. This is the corolla part. And here they are twisted in nature. The estivation is twisted estivation. And from here we find the uh, five stamens which are emerging out. And this is the TS of the ovary where placenta is a little bit oblique in nature. 
and the floral formula starts with B R, B R because it is bracteate, then it is actinomorphic, actinomorphic means regular, it is having both the worlds, the male and the female. So, it is act bisexual. Next K 5, K means calyx, how many are there? 5 sepals are there and they are fused. So, we have put a bracket. Corolla, Corolla has 5 petals, they are also fused. So, bracket is there. Next A stands for andrisium. How many stamens are there? 5 and they are all free. So, no brackets but we have joined C and A. Why? Because andrisium here shows epipetalous nature. It is to the petals that is why we call it epipetalous. Next it is G, G for gynesium. There are two carpels and it is superior in nature. So, this gives us uh, the floral formula for the any of the flower whether it is a flower of brinjal or whether it is a datura, basically they will be having all these characteristics. That is all for your solanaceous flower. Thank you children.